Chapter 11 Miss Kania's Classroom The soft, irregular breaths of the blindfolded students echo through the stillness of the third floor classroom, blending with the sound of their bound hands scraping weakly against the floor. The air was thick with fear and anticipation, every second stretching into an eternity. The killer stood near the door, their silhouette barely visible in the dim light that filtered through the grime-streaked windows. They watched the four figures huddled on the floor. Ebonique, Krushan, Patrick, and Jerrica, each of them trembling with terror. The killer's lips curled into a twisted smile. You probably wonder what this is about, they said softly, their voice a low, dangerous purr that filled the room like smoke. Why you? A soft whimper escaped from Jerrica, her body shaking violently as she struggled to hold in her sobs. The others remained silent, their breath coming in shallow gasps as the killer circled them like a predator toying with its prey. I could tell you the truth, the killer continued, taking slow, deliberate steps toward them. I could explain everything, but what would that change? Their voice grew colder, darker with each word, the enjoyable, unmistakable. The students stiffened, their fear palpable in the thick, oppressive silence. I want you to feel this, the killer whispered, leaning down near Ebonique, their voice barely audible but filled with malice. I want you to understand that this, what's happening to you, is inevitable. Ebonique let out a strangled gasp her head jerking to the side, though the blindfold rendered her world nothing but darkness. You think I'm alone, don't you? The killer taunted, their voice lifting with a hint of amusement. <laughs> you think maybe there's just one of us. Maybe I'm just playing a game. The room seemed to pulse with the weight of that statement, the tension growing unbearable. The students' ragged breaths filled the silence once more their fear mounting with every second. But you'll never know, will you? The killer continued, straightening to their full height, the grin on their face widening. You'll never know if it's just me or if there's someone else waiting for you, always watching, always close. <laughs> A soft chuckle escaped the killer, the sound sharp and chilling. It could have been anyone, someone you trusted. Someone you laughed with. Isn't that what makes it fun? Krushan's breathing grew more erratic, his head turning slightly, as if trying to make sense of the voice, to pinpoint it, but it was useless. Every word the killer spoke seemed to come from all around them, suffocating them in uncertainty. I used to think this would be hard, the killer mused, almost conversationally, as if they were talking about a long-held, personal revelation. Killing. Making you suffer. But you know what? It's easy. The killer's voice dropped lower, a vicious thrill evident in their tone. It's exhilarating. The killer stopped moving, their gaze settling on Patrick. You should be grateful. The words were calm, spoken as if they were offering a gift. Not everyone gets to be part of something like this. You're making history tonight. The students, bound and blindfolded, remained frozen. Terror etched into every breath. The killer savored the silence for a moment, basking in the power before moving toward the back of the room. With a slow, deliberate motion, the killer unlatched a small gas canister. The hiss of poison escaping into the air with a soft, Lethal whisper. The students' breathing quickened, the hissing sound triggering a fresh wave of panic. Jerrica sobbed, trying to scream through her terror, but the blindfold muffled her cries. Crushan <coughs> struggled against his bindings, his body convulsing as he fought to break free but the gas was already seeping into their lungs. 
I always thought it would be harder to enjoy this, the killer murmured, their voice distant now, almost lost in the growing chaos of the room. But watching you die. They paused, a grin spreading across their face. It's everything I wanted it to be. The killer stepped back, leaning against the doorframe, arms crossed as they watched their captives writhe in agony. The poison worked quickly, but not too quickly. There was time, time to watch the life drain from their bodies, to savor every moment. Goodbye, the killer whispered, though it wasn't clear whether they were speaking to the four students or simply to the silence of the room. And thank you. As the gas filled the room, the killer's smile widened. The screams and struggles began to fade, replaced by choking gasp and then silence. And in that silence, the killer stood content, fully immersed in the twisted enjoyment of what they had done. It was pure, perfect, and no one, not even the dying, could understand the pleasure of it. The room grew still. The killer lingered for just a moment longer, basking in the satisfaction before slipping silently into the hallway, leaving death behind them.